So dangerous air pollution affected millions of folks in the northeastern U.S. last week. And our health reporter, Haley Hernandez, is with us here. I mean, we didn't have the, the issues with the Canadian wildfires, but we do have our own ozone action alerts from time to time in the heat. Yeah, and really, I mean, actually, I asked Anthony last week, I was like, is this something I need to be reporting on? Is this coming our way? He said, no, we just, we have bad air quality, right. but it wasn't because of the Canadian, uh, the Canadian fires. Our, our air... Our area did experience ozone pollution levels considered unhealthy for sensitive groups, but it's just because the air quality happened to be bad, not because of those fires. So joining us to discuss what people can do to prevent ground level ozone from harming their respiratory system, Dr. David Purse, Chief Medical Officer with the City of Houston. Good morning, Dr. Purse. Good morning, Haley. So what exactly is ground level ozone? What does that mean? Well, ozone is a colorless gas and it's odorless and it occurs naturally, and it can either be helpful or harmful. When it occurs at the highest levels of our atmosphere, it, it actually creates a shield around the planet that protects us from some of the most dangerous ultraviolet rays that the sun produces. But when we see it at the lower levels where we live, it can be harmful, uh, and it is a product of, of combustion. So cars, power plants, refineries, chemical plants, others, that they produce the ozone that then reacts with the sunlight and creates problems for us here at the, the local level. We find it most um, most often the higher levels are, you know, in the afternoons, and you were just reporting about the weather a little bit ago, in the afternoons and those sunny days in the summer, that's when it gets to be the worst. So it's the particles in the air that make it harmful to people's health? Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, it's, it's the ozone here at the lower levels of the atmosphere where we breathe, where we live. That's where, um, you know, you're going to breathe it. And again, it's, you know, highest in those hot summer days in the afternoon. If there's little air to blow it away, that's when we're going to see it the most. And it can really do an impact, particularly on things like your respiratory system. Mm -hmm. um, it is an irritant. So in the large and the small airways, it irritates the, the lung passages. Um, it also affects the, the, the lung function, making it really difficult for people to breathe. So again, if you're outside, and let's say you're exercising in the afternoon, you're going to notice you're going to be taking more shit rapid and more shallow breaths. And it's often a problem for people who are either like exercising outdoors in the afternoon or for outdoor workers. So who are, who are the people who are most at risk of feeling these effects? And, and what are some of the other symptoms that they might be feeling? Yeah, so, you know, we worry most, really basically anyone uh, of any age. Children, we find, um, are at high risk because they're the ones who are often outside playing in the afternoon, you know, especially in these summer afternoons. So they're outside running around, breathing deeply, breathing in a lot of the ozone. But adults of any age are outside, so sometimes you've got folks who like to exercise in the afternoon or, you know, because they get off of work at, say, maybe they get, they get a job or they get off work at 3 or 4 in the afternoon, and so they want to run before dinner. And it's a hot day with low wind, they're going to get it. And then again, we also worry even about babies because, you know, their lungs are still developing. So, again, if they're outside in the the uh, the, less, the afternoon, late afternoon, you know, on hot days, and the other thing is that the babies aren't going to tell you when they're having trouble breathing. They get irritable. The mom may just think that they're hungry. But really, it can affect people of any age. Again, it's watching, you know, when you're outside in the afternoon. So the solution would then be to go inside or is what are, are there other measures to protect yourself when you start to feel that coming on? Yeah, so basically what we need to do is we need to be smart. Again, you know, here in Houston, when we just talk about the heat, we, we advise folks and the outdoor workers to sort of adjust their work schedule, right? So start a little bit earlier, take a longer break during midday and maybe work later in the evening because the heat alone, we, we see people get heat stroke and stuff. So ozone is just another reason why people may want to Pay attention to the weather and what they're doing outdoors. Again, trying to avoid being outdoors in those late afternoons and those really hot sunny days, especially days where there's little wind to blow it away. Um, maybe you want to, you know, change your schedule so you're doing things indoors on those at those times. Uh, and then, of course, as a society, we can do things to reduce the amount of ozone, but that's a much larger discussion. But <laughs> yeah. for the individual, for your viewers, it's pay attention to the weather, pay attention to what you're going to be doing, and maybe adjust your schedule a little bit so that you're not doing this bigger thing. Maybe you want to go for a walk in the afternoon instead of going for a jog. Yeah, that sounds good to me, too. So, Dr. Purse, you know, the next few days, we've got these 100-degree days coming up this week. Does it always go hand-in-hand hand with hot weather? Like, should we expect the air quality to be more poor on the days when it's really hot like that? It's not necessarily hand in hand. There are multiple factors that go into it. For example, if it's gonna be really, really hot, but there's a decent breeze, then we may not have an ozone problem. But yeah, for the most part, you can anticipate that it will correlate. Now we with the Houston Health Department, we do put out ozone alerts. And so when they're reported by folks at like you and local media, and so folks can pay attention to that too. 
um, uh, you know, to protect themselves, to be aware of what's going on in the, in the environment around them. Yeah, always good information. I feel like, you know, when we talk about it being stifling hot, it's because we're talking about not having a good breeze. So definitely another thing to pay attention to is your breathing and, and another reason to have safe shelter to get into and, and take a break from that from that weather. That's right. And, you know, the other thing is don't forget about your neighbors. When we talk about the heat in the summer, we always say, you know, consider the neighbor who lives down the street who doesn't have air conditioning. Well, again, you know, this is, you know, Houston is a wonderful city. We see, you know, all the time and especially during disasters how we come together and we look out for each other here's another reason if you've got another person lives down the street you know they got breathing problems you may want to you know check on them and make sure that they're doing things indoors as opposed to outdoors especially if you see them out doing gardening in the late afternoon on a really hot day you may want to offer them a cup of tea or you know iced tea and let's go inside and uh, uh, get some air conditioning all right always good advice thank you dr purse for getting up early and joining us live we appreciate it